Today, we're gonna to be using our stencil of the month and our little beer mug to make a bar sign. So if you guys don't know, every month we come out with a stencil of the month and a template of the month. So we have new products coming out all the time. Now the premium and executive members get these for free every single month. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check it out. We're gonna use these to make an awesome bar sign that's gonna be part of our raffle for the VO2 fundraiser. They help veterans with PTSD and they help them through big events. They do Tough Mudders and physical fitness. And it's a great cause, so if you guys are interested in that, check it out because these guys need some help getting to the toughest mudder in Dallas, Texas. I'll leave a link in the description below for all the products we use today, plus a ton of other stuff. Now let's make some sawdust. To lay out a stencil like this, it's actually really simple. You just wanna make sure that you have the even space on the left and the right. Now, with a live edge board like this, you have to kind of eyeball the top and the bottom because you won't really get a true measurement based on the shape of the board. Now I used Loctite spray adhesive to hold down my stencil and I should have used a little bit more because there were areas that were popping up. If that happens to you, all you have to do is use a carpenter's pencil or anything you don't mind getting spray on and hold down the areas that are popping up. It'll make sure to give you a good solid line and you can reuse the stencil. Now for the beer mugs, I wanted to have kind of an even look to it, so I just put one at the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner. And I'm pretty happy with how it came out. For the beer mug, I use the profile bit at 3 16ths of an inch deep. Now normally we go to a quarter inch deep, but these are some pretty thin lines. This thing is a lot of fun to carve. One thing you have to be careful of is where two lines are getting really close to each other. You want to stay to the farthest end of the line where you have a little bit more space. Because if those two lines touch, then your final product is going to look really muddled and you won't have definitive lines. Like this line right here, it came really close to the other one, but I just kind of cheated it towards the black a little bit more to make sure that those are two separate lines. Now that the real thin lines are done, I dropped my profile bit down to a quarter of an inch deep. Now when you have little hash marks like this, you want to feather your way into it and feather your way out of it. That way you make sure to keep good sharp lines. With the wording, especially the fat font, I'm sinking this bit all the way down the full quarter of an inch because these are real fat letters and you don't have to really get any sharp points on them. So I'm going around the inside of each line and that way all I have to do is come back with probably my 60 degree bit and take out the rest. These long lines like this are a good example of feathering your way into the carving and feathering your way out. That way they don't just look like a fat kind of simple line. When we're doing stencils, like the top of this R right here actually has a line through it. That's just to make sure that no pieces fall out as we're cutting it with the laser. So if it helps you, you can actually connect those lines, but you don't really need to. All you have to do is carve right through them. When you're doing a script font, like the bottom line here, I keep my bit still at a quarter of an inch deep, but I've also had quite a bit of practice of lifting the base and just adjusting my depth that way. But if it helps you, you can actually raise the bit up a little bit and just do it in more passes. It really doesn't matter. It's the final look that you're looking for.
When you do lift the base to adjust the depth of your bit, you don't have to lift it very much. This is a perfect example of that, but because that's such a thin line, I don't want to keep it at the full quarter of an inch depth because that's going to make it way too wide and it's going to look a little funky. The little hands on the clock were really tiny. I probably should have actually adjusted my depth just to do those because they got fine points on them and you want them to look right. But I was able to do it enough with lifting the base. However, again, I should have just adjusted the bit. Next I put the 60 degree bit in at 3 16 of an inch deep and I went in and took out all of the rest of the wood that was in the lettering. Now I could have done this with the profile bit but I try not to do that if I can at all help it because that just dulls the profile bit that much faster. The 60 degree bit takes a long time to dull. Once all my carving's done, then I'm going to brush the crap out of it with a stiff brush, make sure I get all the chips and sawdust out of there before I spray. Then all we got to do is use our primer and make sure you get a good coat of black inside the carving, but you don't want to do it so much that you're going to cause bleeding. Like on this beer mug, it was a little heavier than I meant to do, so I should have kept that can a little farther away. Once the black is dry, all we got to do is go in with our 60 grit disc on our disc sander, get 90-95% of the black off, then I switch to a 120 on the disc sander to give it a good smooth finish. Then we got to put the finish on it. Now, especially if you're going to paint something, you want to make sure you put a lot of finish on it. Before I ever started painting this, I probably had 8 to 10 coats on it. And we were using Rust-Oleum Clear, and it works great for indoor applications. Then we used our one-shot paint, the yellow and the white, and painted our beer mugs. One shot works great. It's a little expensive, but man, it covers well, and it turns out looking really, really nice. So there it is guys. Honestly, I'm so happy with the way this thing came out. This cedar is amazing. I love this stuff. Now, this one had a lot of knots in it, so there were parts where it was really hard to carve. But just take your time and you won't have an issue. It just takes a little bit of practice. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com, and we'll see you on the next one.